Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Where's the cartoon? What happened to the animation? We're not doing the show until we get an explanation. It's coming back? Are you adding nah, people and taking start people over, out? Start over, hit it, start right. over. <laughs> Roll it. <laughs> oh wait, no, it's real. Hi, this is Run It Back on FanDuel TV. It's uh, This is like an early morning show, welcome. My name's Michelle Beadle, Chandler Parsons. I feel like we're about to talk about the weather. And we are gonna talk about the weather, what'd you do last night? Um, but we've got a couple of really great guests today. Uh, coming to us, we've got Sham Sharania. Oh, Shams, you're alone because Lou, I think we're just having some technical issues. There's we'll some a, tef- technical we'll difficulties going on. up here in a second. Lou's in a new room. You it, can just tell it's... It really a- was. We have a couple of games to talk about. I will start by saying one is good and one is bad. Mm. Let's start with the good, shall we? We shall. Pacers at the Garden. Wow, 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 wow. This was a good one. Brunson, once again, leading his team to victory, 121-117. Uh, he had 43, 6-6. Six and six. Fourth straight 40-point playoff game. That's the first since, guess who? Um, Michael Jordan. Oh, dear. Yep, you got it. Hart, 24, 13, and 80. He had four offensive rebounds. Halliburton had six points, eight assists, and Miles Turner with his 23. We'll get at all of that, of course, but... Let's talk some questionable calls. There were a few in this one. Um, there was one that, unless you're a Knicks fan, maybe you're a little bit more hung up on than others. And we'll pull it here. It's an illegal screen call uh, on Miles Turner. It had 12 seconds remaining on the clock when this happened, Chandler. <clears throat> we'll, we'll take you through it. Tell me what you think. I don't love it. And it's this is why I hate review, first of all, because when you slow down, if you slow down 90% of the plays in an NBA game, for you're sure. gonna find something Traveling wrong. Traveling probably every time. You're, it, you're gonna find something wrong. You're gonna find it being a foul, not a foul, out of bounds on the wrong guy. So I hate this. Is this a foul if you really slow it down like this I mean, and send it to Sakakis? Maybe, even, still, I, I'm not sure. But we talk about playoff basketball and a different intensity level and physicality. You cannot let this decide the game. I, I think this is just so soft and, and this is just not right. And. The fact that they even took time, challenged it, and, and saw that maybe he was still leaning that way, like, it, it's just bogus. The fact that this game is so physical, this series, is, was, yeah. you know, last series with New York was so physical, and then you called this just weak-ass illegal screen to, to basically decide the game. I, I don't agree with it. Is it a foul, I guess, technically? Sure. But again, you can look back on... 25 plays and the, that that screen was set and not called. But so see, it's, you got to be consistent. Been mad, regardless, call it or don't call it. I don't even think New York has an issue if they're, they. I don't think they're throwing Depends a fit the, today. Uh, that's an illegal screen. That's just like it's, it's such a soft. There's no way. We'll lose our big rule follower here on the show. If a foul's a foul, it's yeah. a foul, right, Lou? So what do you think? Yeah, I I, I agree with the I, I agree with the fact with Chandler that. There's inconsistencies. That's that's the issue. So when it comes down to a play like that, the problem becomes how the game is being called inconsistently up until that point. Because it is an offensive foul, you know, whether we love it or, or not. We don't want the game to be decided on, on those type of things. But that is an offensive foul. Unfortunately, it happened at a moment where we would like for the players to decide games and play through it. But if you're an official and a guy like DiVincenzo does a good job of selling this, you got to call it. It puts them in a position and it is what it is. It was an offensive foul. Uh, Turner should have been Turner should have been set. And I'm also questioning the play call. Like usually we don't see a, we don't see a high screen and roll happening at that juncture of the game. A lot of times the guy's gonna stay low until you're ready to get your shot. So you know a lot of things can be determined right here based on the play call, what happened, and what have you. But it was an offensive. Foul. Lou, I could almost argue the other side that what ha- I know there was contact on the actual screen, but what happened to the whole flopping? Thing. Like afterwards, you flop. think he got sniped, bro? Like that, that's not like a natural <laughs> yeah, I, reaction. So shouldn't he get punished? Selling. Shouldn't he get penalized too for the flop? I don't know. I thought it was subtle. Oh, like come <laughs> on! Great job of great job of selling, man. And that's what good defensive teams do. They put themselves in a position to win games. Miles Turner got caught slipping, and DiVincenzo was able to take advantage of it. I Again, hate that it was called. I don't like I when it was called. And I don't, and I get, like we talked, uh, the Knicks have been so physical, and yeah. all game long, they're physical. They're fighting over screens. They're running through screens. None of this was called. So the fact that the last play of the game, game on the line, and then you decide to call it, just it doesn't sit well with me. 
That's fair. The timing of it, you guys don't love. Uh, by the way, Lou, are you in a Parisian cafe? <laughs> yeah. Where are you? Yeah. You're definitely at a diner that used <laughs> no, to be a I'm, fish I'm... tank behind you, and now it's covered because there's something this? else back uh, there. I'm, I'm, I'm actually in the same spot I'm usually in. We're having some issues with my with, with my <laughs> setup, but so we had to had to call Audible. So my my angle is different, but I'm wow. in the same. In Omaha. He's just changing it yeah. up. I like that for you. Uh, Pacers head coach Rick Carlisle, of course, was asked about this illegal screen after the game. Yeah, I, I don't want to talk about the officiating. We're not, we're not expecting to get calls in here. You know, um, it would be nice if they, if they laid off that one, but they didn't. So, you know, that's just, that's just the way it goes. I mean, it was, we challenged it. They reviewed it. They got a bunch of people in New Jersey that agreed with them. So that's just the way it goes. Do you remember not too long ago in the women's final four, the, the Iowa UConn illegal screen? Yeah. That was more of an illegal screen than this was. And they're both, I think, soft, and they both I don't think should be called. But that, I think, had more of a case than this screen here. And it, not, it wouldn't have necessarily made the end of the game different. No, they still, still could have played defense yeah. for six more seconds and missed a shot and still won it. You exactly. Know. So it wouldn't have necessarily. If I'm the Pacers, though, I'm pissed because I didn't even get an opportunity at it. And that literally that whistle decided the outcome of our possession and, our, and basically the game. Do refs like it when you insinuate, <laughs> like, for example, he says we didn't expect to get calls here in New York? Do refs get irritated when you just basically say y'all don't do your jobs the same from building to building? Yeah, they hate it. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you're, challenging, you're challenging what they do. But it's true, right? It's true, too, because also, like, at the end of the game, coaches always tell you, go downhill, make them call, make them call, and they usually don't. So the fact that he didn't even get this opportunity to get to the basket to yeah. create contact on this just weak-ass screen, to me, it's just, uh, we're beating a dead horse now, but it's just, it's the, it's the wrong time for this. I don't like this illegal screen in the first quarter, let alone 12 seconds, six, eight seconds, whatever it was. The timing was a little bit odd, um, but let's talk. Let's talk the good stuff, shall we? Jalen Brunson, once again, just being a leader. 43 points, fourth straight of these 40-point plus games. Uh, in terms of importance to a team, if we look at the landscape right now, playoff teams remaining, his importance to his team moving forward. Where does that rank? I mean, you look at Jokic. I think he's he's obviously very important now. When, what have they done for me lately? They're down. Oh, we'll get to that. They're down 0-2. Yeah. So that. You look at what, to me, right now, it's it's Jalen Brunson and Anthony Edwards. These two guys are so critical to their team. They're so aggressive. They're the go-to guy, and there's absolutely no question. They're big in clutch moments. Uh, you know, and what he's doing every four games in a row, 40 plus nights, crazy. he's efficient. 14 of 14 from the free throw line. He's taking care of the ball for the most part. It, it's just, it really is unbelievable. He continues to get better and better, and each game is a bigger moment where he steps up and he makes the big shot or he makes the big play. Um, and he just seems just like he's just such a nice, just humbled like star <laughs> in this huge mecca of Madison Square Garden just dominating. It, it, it's unbelievable what he's doing. So he's he's right there with Ant and Jokic, in my opinion, on just, this is why MVP voting also should be later. I know Jokic is, in, and SGA hasn't played in a while, and Tatum hasn't played in a while, but. That's for real. I feel like all I'm seeing right now, because the series are that more competitive, are, is Anthony Edwards and Jalen Brunson. Yeah. So, and, and so it's like, shouldn't that factor into the whole MVP of the season? So that's a whole other argument, but Jalen Brunson's been phenomenal. He's been uh, a blast, a revelation, if you will, Lou. I, you know what? Th we're going to start the conversation, might as well, because when you talk Knicks, there are obviously legends. It's a city of legends. Um, and I know we're living in the moment, and I don't want to be a prisoner of that, but... Where can we put him now that we're starting this conversation of greatest Knicks, perhaps? Well, we got to let him build. We got to continue to do what he's been doing. He's playing at a high, high level. He's excited the New York fan base. He's got people excited about New York Knicks basketball again. They're winning. They're playing well. It's exciting. It's great for the league. It's great for everybody, especially Jalen Brunson. Who saw this coming, <laughs> right? Who knew that he would be the guy that would bring this team back to to some type of prominence in, in the East. And, and it's an exciting time. Now we're talking about ever. This is a legacy piece right here. Let's see what he let's see what he does. Let's see how the, how this ends up. You know, if they win this game and then mess around and lose four in a row, this is a completely different conversation. 
we got to allow things to, to be completed and be finished. He has a long career ahead of, ahead of him in a New York Knicks uniform. Let's see what happens. But, you know, when you look at it, you got guys like Pat Ewins and, and Willis Reeds and, and, and all of these type of guys. You, it's it's going to be hard. Uh, Walt Frazier, it's going to be hard to just say, wake up today and say Jalen Brunson is the best Nick ever <clears throat> outside of those legacies. But he's building. He's in the right He's in the right direction to be mentioned with those guys. You, you know what this reminds me of, Michelle? It reminds me of Lynn Sanity. No, don't say that. It's, I was thinking it, and I wasn't going to say it out loud. It is great, but it's not going to end. Like, in Lynn Sanity okay, was okay, a okay. nuts, like, that was two like or a three trend. weeks or whatever. Yeah, that was like a fad. Yeah. This is like, it's just, when, when does it stop? Like, Never. like four, it's it's incredible how parade. consistent. Look at those numbers in the playoffs. 37, it's like crazy. nine. He's efficient. It, it's unbelievable what he's doing. So it's like the garden now is totally turned into this Lynn Sandy type vibe where it's they're not going to see the Knicks win next game. They're going to see if Jalen Brunson can have 40 again. Like, it's, it's starting to become that. Like, it is crazy what he's done to this franchise in such a short time. Knicks were a laughingstock a couple years in a yeah. row. Like, you know, they oh, are, wow. like, New York Knicks are back, and it's because of Jalen Brunson. I mean, the city, the, the chance afterwards outside, I know it's New York and it's everything's crazy and, and, uh, amplified, but it, it is like the streets are filled. And also he's doing this with just like his pops on the bench as an assistant yeah, coach. It's like beautiful. I can't think of a cooler situation. With his buddies from school? With his Who college teammates this? that he won a national championship down the street that, well, by the way, we just knocked off the Sixers where I played college and won a natty. Like, it's unbelievable it's what's like happening. It's like a movie. Good things just keep happening to this dude. I know, and I'm scared. Uh, Shams, <laughs> what has caught your eye in this series so far? I mean, to me, it's Jalen Brunson... F Four straight games of 40 points, five assists or more. And that's the first in NBA history. So forget the 40-point uh, streak that matches Michael Jordan. He's the only one that's put up these numbers in playoff history. And that matchup between him and Tyrese Halliburton, Tyrese Halliburton got the final Team USA spot. And here you see Jalen Brunson, 43 <laughs> points last night. Tyrese Halliburton only with six points on six shots. He's got to be more aggressive. He's got to find ways to get more offense. Jalen Brunson, Tyrese Halliburton both have the ball in their hands a significant amount. I mean, you look at the usage rating that Jalen Brunson has, almost 40% of the game, the ball is in his hands. Tyrese Halliburton has similar responsibilities for the Pacers, so seeing if his offense can take it up another gear, um, I think that's going to be very important. But Jalen Brunson, a few weeks ago, they asked him about Team USA. He said, I'm not even focused on that. I'm worried about the playoffs. But I think a lot of people around the league looked at Tyrese Halliburton making that spot over a Brunson, <laughs> over a Kyrie Irving. And now Jalen Brunson has a great opportunity here to potentially win the series and outplay yes. Tyrese Halliburton. Sure, this is that's not something they can like renege on and like take that away. Like that's Tyrese. Like, jersey that's, back. Like, that, yeah, like that's Jalen Brunson's just not gonna play on Team USA, right? Like that's that's done. Unless there's more more injuries. I mean, listen, Kawhi yeah. Leonard, we'll see it, we'll see if he can play. But if he doesn't he play, play, you look at guys like Paolo Bancaro, Paul George, and yeah, Jalen Brunson is in that mix as well. It just depends on where Grant Hill and Team USA go. Can you get yeah. the State Department involved and just take <laughs> no, his passport? I mean, you right? can't do that like, to Tyrese, but that's <laughs> probably Good. feeling some sort of way. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to Tyrese, too, because that the six points, is it's obviously glaring. You'd think it was a much worse score, though, as a result of that. But Tibbs, um, look, the joy of this year has been Tibbs is being celebrated more than he hasn't been. And I feel like in years past that he's sort of gotten ripped apart for the way he plays guys. Maybe he's found his group. And they all sort of get it. But so far right now, uh, 48 minutes for Hart, 43 minutes for Brunson, 43 for DiVincenzo, and 42 for OG. And I know this was like a crazy game with a lot riding on it. Does it, fe it doesn't feel like anyone's taxed so far. Am I crazy? No, and if it was anybody else, I'd be concerned, like about the whole load management, the injury history. These three dudes in general, it just feels like they're conditioned for this. It feels yeah. like this is what they do, this is what they've been doing. They've been, you know, fortunate, knock on wood, with with the not being plagued with injuries. So this is this is what Tibbs does. He shortens the rotations. He plays guys longer minutes and bigger, longer stints. Uh, and these three guys have proven that they're not affected by it. They're still they're still productive. I mean, I mean that, that's an outrageous amount of minutes. Crazy. But you watch them; they don't physically look like Joel. Sometimes, obviously, he's hurt. He looked tired. Look guys, like he'd look run a marathon. These three yeah. dudes don't look like sh they're slowing down anytime no. soon. So I would be concerned if it was anybody else other than this culture and program that Tibbs has kind of created. And with these three guys. I, I don't see a concern they at found all. each other. Until, obviously, if something were to happen, then it's no. like, got yeah. yeah. That's what I was going to say, Chandler. <laughs> right now it looks like it's, it's working. 
man. But with the style of play that Indiana plays up and down, up and down, up and down, New York's going to have to find a way to control the pace of this basketball game and play more of a Jalen Brunson place where it's stop and go, stop and go. I can pick my spots when I want to use speed. Other than that, we're going to be methodical, get good shots in the half court. Because if you play these guys 42, 43, 48 minutes or whatever, and one of these guys go out with a pull hamstring or something, the conversation becomes completely different for the New York Knicks, especially Coach Tibbs. Listen, I was a part of that series when Derrick Rose went out. They were up 20 points with tw two minutes to go. Derrick Rose is still in the game. He goes out with a torn ACL. Knock on wood, I would hate for anything to happen to all of these guys, especially with how exciting this series is about to be and how the playoffs have been for the Knicks. But, man, he got to find a way to get other guys on the floor and get these guys breathers. And even with like, now with Bogdanovich out and him, hey. this is going to – but they, they do – they have Shake Milton. They have Alec Burks. They have other, like, guard wings. No, that they don't. Can give you eight minutes. Like, <laughs> they, they do not. I'm just saying. <laughs> Not feeling it, Beetle. They, they haven't played. They have like it's just but not I'm works. just saying they have a capable, <laughs> they have capable vets on yeah. the bench that they could go to it before it's too late. But again, dance with the girl that brought you here, and these three guys have. These, that ain't broke. Yeah. They, <laughs> never dance with the girl that got us here. Yeah, yeah. That's, Lou, uh, <laughs> we, we don't get enough tip sound in the show, so here's a good excuse to put some in. Here he is. Well, I think it's important. I, you, you do it. You always put the team first. Whatever is necessary to help the team, that's what you got to do. And right now, that's where we are, and that's where we've been the entire season. We've been shorthanded the whole season. So, you know, and, and our, this team has the belief that they can win. So, just keep whatever you have, give it to the team, and that's what we're asking everyone to do. I love it when he doesn't even crack a smile. But it, th this word, look, maybe I not everyone's I didn't hear a word he said because I'm trying to do this computer. Yeah, so the computer's been broken. Uh, I don't even know why you're bothering. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, Tibbs got so much crap for so long. And it really I maybe was it. as simple as finding. You don't love it? I don't love it. Talk to me. I don't, I don't love it. Listen, if you're, you're playing four guys 40-plus minutes and you got eight guys on the bench and you're saying we're shorthanded, we don't have enough, and I'm sitting here looking like, I'm I'm more than capable to help this team. You know, whether you trust me or not, I, I that's going to be an issue. Hmm. I like the fact that he said, do what's best for the team. He feels like these guys staying on the floor is what's be best for the New York Knicks. I have to agree with him, but I also think he has guys on his bench that he can trust who are pro-worthy that you can put out there that can give these guys an opportunity to finish games for you and uh, being allowed to have a breather or two to do that. Yeah, like that's that was my point with the Shake Miltons and the, and the Alex like Burks. Buddy Heald came in and had that right. Like, but but that's what Tibbs does. He never kind of gave Fournier a shot, and that's not his type of player. It's not that tough right. defensive-minded player. But like Alec Burks and Shake Milton, kind of are. So they do have guys that they can at least last three minutes of a you know a quarter to get some sort of breather, some sort of stretch where they Fresh. can do that while keeping Brunson, while keeping one or two of them on the court. There's definitely some different rotations that he can go to to make it more balanced and not so abusive well, of these minutes. We'll see what happens. You never yeah. you never know. Um, Tyrese Halliburton, I'm sure, had a tough time sleeping last night because the six points, two for six, two for six shooting, mm. three turnovers. Look, they, they only lost by four, but this is not what a star does. In no, this and, and Tyrese Halliburton has now set the, the standard and the bar so high for himself that we expect more. And when you look at his line, it, it, it's he two for six with eight eight assists and Ooh. and three turnovers. Like if you're gonna have six points, you better damn well have 15, 16 assists. You better be getting guys involved. And listen, it was a weird offensive night for them last night. Like T.J. McConnell was going nuts. Like mm. it was, and I like their balanced attack, but I feel like when the Pacers are elite. Halliburton is dominant, and he's controlling the game. His usage rate is through the roof. He always has the ball. And like I said, I do love when they're getting product, uh, production from their bench and everybody's contributing. Obi Toppin's contributing. Neesmith has kind of came out of nowhere, and he's oh. been contributing. But he's got to be the guy that's that threat to go off and have these Jalen Brunson-type games and kind of neutralize what Jalen Brunson's doing on the other side. Because six points, eight assists, three weird. turnovers for your all-star franchise point guard is just not going to cut it. It's a weird line. It's not good at all, man. It's not good. And listen, we talk about reputations, right? At some point, he's going to have to show up in this series before you start hearing the criticism, especially with, from, from New York Knicks fans. I'm sure his Twitter and his Instagram, they're flooding his comments. They're giving him a hard time. And then, you know, you're going back home after, after this next game. 
you're going to have to have something for these fans to be excited about. So you playing this way, this team is not going to have zero chance of winning the game against the New York Knicks if you're going to struggle at this clip. And he's earned this right. He's put in the work he's had this season. He's had now two seasons where he's an all-star and he's a dominant player and he's really made a name for himself. There's no way, there's no reason that you're taking six shots in a playoff game. I think that's the hard part. There's just, just no way. just taking the six shots. And five of them are three. There's one, yeah. you took one, one field goal inside a three-point line. That's yeah, unacceptable. You take six shots a quarter. Take that's weird. There were seven dudes yeah. that took as many shots. Like Not that, that okay. doesn't read well. Maybe it was just jitters, you know? First game, the garden. It's like, yeah, second, I don't know. I'm just trying. Um, <laughs> we did get a really good highlight, though. Obi Toppin, because he tried to do this in the last series and missed. But not last I night. want you to just take a look at the time and the score here. <laughs> <laughs> I was so confused when I saw this. Do you understand what Rick Carlisle would have done if this man missed this? I mean, you're right. It's the end of the third. It's a close game. They're up five in the second <laughs> half. They, they end up losing this game. Like, this just didn't age very well. It does it's look It's an cool, insane. Yeah, like it's, not, it's awesome. I wish I yeah. could do that. I wish I had the confidence to do that. Uh, you sound like a grumpy old man, Chandler. Get this is. Get him. You know this was nice. He, he said, oh. we look, you sound like the grumpy ex-player, man. No, <laughs> like, I said it was awesome. I am just saying it was awesome. ballsy. <laughs> <laughs> like in a playoff game that you in game one on the road, you're up six points. But there. he's back in the garden. He's like probably misses it a little it. bit. Hey, I yeah. I'm down for it because he made it. If he would have missed it, if we'd be talking about it. how what a dumb like what a dumb move this was. It would have been two missed. Yeah. We're like, oh. I'm down for it, Chandler, because at the end of the day, we're we're all fans. That, we're all fans now. We don't have any dogs in this fight. I want to be entertained. I want, I, listen, I want the best product the NBA can put out. Right now with the games that's play, being played in the West, Obi Toppin going between his legs. We got controversy <laughs> with the referees. These playoffs are everything that we wanted. I'm cool with it. And this team shipped him out. So it's like, it, let me, let me show them what they're, what they're missing yeah. every single yeah, night. Yeah, I think it's like yeah. he just put on it's his just best a, it's just a It's just a ballsy move. That's it's all. very ballsy. And had he missed, it would be a different conversation. Uh, well, we tried to put it off, but that other game, what is happening in this series? They crushed them. T Wolves just shut it down. 106 to 80. No Rudy Gobert. Edwards with 27 and 7. Cat with 27 and 12. Jokic 16, 16 and 8. And Murray uh, had 8 points, 13 rebounds. Um, the defense for the Tim Timberwolves is annoyingly swarming, and they held them to a season low 80 points and 16 turnovers. All of that without Rudy Gobert, by the way. What? It's one thing to win two of these games in Denver. It's another thing to do what they did last night. What, what do you take away from this? That This is one of the best defensive performances I've ever seen in my entire life. And this team's been doing it all year long, so I don't know why we continue to be surprised by it. But <laughs> yes, look at that. Th this was at, to do this again without Rudy Gobert, to force that many turnovers against this offensive team in particular that has dominated the NBA over the last couple of years and with just literally taking Jokic oh out of his gosh. comfort zone, taking Jamal Murray. He's been an absolute non-factor this series and sometimes they're a plane taking off. I think we're in the ocean. <laughs> uh, it, it's in, to give up 80 points. I mean, this is the, the Nuggets usually have 80 points in the three quarters. Yeah. Like this, this, it's just an unbelievable dominant performance. The way they do it, you could just tell they have more fun on the defensive end than they do on the <laughs> offensive end, which is crazy because they're so electric on the offensive end too now. And, and it took me a while, but I, I, man, it is hard not to believe in this team because Defense travels, and we always talk about the, for the, the, the game in the playoffs slowing down, possessions are, are, are you know, more important. They have both. They have both sides of the ball. I don't even know what's better. Their defense obviously is, is better, but, man, offensively, when Cat's going like he was going yesterday and Anthony Edwards does the things he does, then you get, you know, 8 to 16 points from these other guys. It's just so consistent. But no matter what, the best thing about this team is when their shots are falling or they are, they are falling or not falling, they are still locking up. They're still talking on the defensive end. They're still switching, <laughs> flying around. They have more fun playing defense than offense, which is a rare, rare trait for a team. And their year. shots were hitting. Uh, it seemed like they couldn't now, miss. Look, Good Lord. Speaking of, man, speaking of having fun playing defense, there was a possession in the second half I saw last night. Jamal Murray pushed off of Alexander Smith, and Al he, stood, uh, uh, um, uh, he stood there. And he laughed with this cynical grin, mm -hmm. and he got back down in his defensive stance. And I said, damn, he's really excited about playing defense. <laughs> like, they really want to get stops. This is something that they really love doing. So if you're a basketball fan and you've been complaining that the NBA, they don't play defense, they don't do this, this Minnesota Timberwolves is the team for you to get behind. This is the team for you to watch.
And yeah. it made me, even though, and we we said we we weren't gonna jump the gun, but yesterday oh, watching them play defense, I couldn't help but think, damn, I can't wait till they match up with Oklahoma City. Mm. I mean, that's wow. be, that listen, that's gonna be a series where some high level young players are gonna play defense to the. We might see an eighty five point game. We might see an eighty to eighty five point finish if these two play, these two teams play each other. Lou makes a great point because every, every team I played on, and Lou, you remember this, you would do the defensive slide drills in the beginning of practice. Alexander Walker was doing this laughing, guarding Jamal Murray last night, like cutting him off. Nope. Cut, look at him right here. Cutting kind him of off. Maniacal, nope. isn't it? Like literally almost making it a Crazy joke person. that you are mine. You are going nowhere. I have you, I have you clamped. You are doing nothing. That's terrifying. And he's just laughing in his face. It, it's 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 unbelievable that this gives that's what I'm talking about when they're saying they have more fun on the defensive that's, end. Yeah. This gives them more joy than like an ant poster or a dunk. It's like the charges they take, the double teams they get, the steals they create, the turnovers. It's unbelievable. I've never seen a defensive performance like this. And no one plays defense. It's, it's all effort. It's all energy. Chris Finch has instilled this. Rudy Gobert, we shit on him last year. Everybody did. Everybody or, did. He's instilled this whole defensive mindset culture that no matter what happens on the other end, we can still beat any team in this NBA because we can lock up and defend. And it starts Bought with in. him. So the fact they did this also without him uh -huh. just shows how contagious and how much of now this isn't just a, it's not a game. This is the lifestyle. This is how they play every single night with or without their defensive player. The I year. love the, the KG tweet, like defense that sells tickets is a funny phrase, and yet it works here. Uh, Shams, we mentioned Rudy Gobert a couple times there. Obviously, he wasn't in this game last night, personal reasons. Um, mazel. Will he be in game three? Yeah, so he, he had the birth of his child, uh, first first born, uh, first newborn child, a son, and he actually tried to fly and make it to the game in oh. Denver. He tried to fly throughout the day yesterday, but uh, weather conditions in Denver, also in Minnesota, the, supposedly it was super windy in Denver. Flights were being delayed. He did not make it for the game. I think everyone obviously expects him to play in game three in Minnesota. They're going to go for a 2-0 series lead, but like Chandler said, the fact that they were able to have that type of defensive effort without the potential defensive player of the year. We'll know who that will be tonight after shout out Michelle Wemby won rookie of the year last night. But I, but I, I will say, I think it's a kudos to Chris Finch and the culture that he's developed for, for the defense to be contagious and also Nas Reed. There's not really much of a drop off with him uh, on the defensive end. Congrats, Wemby. Enjoy your crepes. Thank you. Enjoy your crepes you. in Paris tonight while Chet's playing in the playoffs. Merci, so. yeah, merci. Crazy to me, though. I didn't see that coming. Unanimous? Unanimous. One of six. Guys, remember this when you thought it was Chet? <laughs> that was a great time. <laughs> um, <laughs> I still don't. I don't. I'm with Lou. Unanimous? Unanimous. You like that's no. that's that's, that's, that's offensive. You know what that means? It means nobody voted for Chet. <laughs> Does Gronk know what that means? <laughs> no, Gronk does not know what it means. Watch the roast. Um, let's talk Nuggets for, for a second here, because honestly, like this has been awesome, and, and it's a great story in the Timberwolves, but to see that game play out the way it did last night, it, it was all bad. Like It got really physical. It got weird. Michael Malone lost his mind at one point, which <laughs> I thought he was not only going to get a T, just go to your car, and he didn't. I guess. <laughs> like, that is close. This is Mark Davis, too, which Mark Davis right? usually is the biggest prick of all of them. Wait, and why? he has a short temper. I think, obviously, something happened here where I don't think Mark agreed, obviously, with the, he re the way he reacted. But I, I'm with you, Michelle. This, I thought he's going to get tossed. And he didn't Easily. even get a tech. And they went to, I remember, they went to like commercial break and they came back and they weren't shooting free throws. I'm like, wait. Yep. No, that didn't just happen. I know. We've that, seen people get uh, teed up for way less. Yeah, I, I earned a new respect for Mark Davis last night after that because I felt like Mike Malone yelled at him. He, it sounded like something he didn't enjoy it, and he yelled back. So <laughs> once you yell back, it becomes personal. It's not about basketball. This is man-to-man. -man. And he took himself as a referee outside of that confrontation, outside of that situation, and he made a business decision. You said what you had to say. I said what I had to say. Let's get back to hooping. And so I, I, I can appreciate Mark Davis for that. It reminded me of like an old school baseball dust up. Oh, yeah. Like where it's just like nobody gets thrown out. We just get our words out and everyone feels better. Uh, but that wasn't the only weird moment. Jamal Murray also had a, had a you could tell he wasn't feeling his best. Um, apparently tosses a heating pad. Can you see it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heating pad right there at a ref from the bench. Yeah. How does that this this is gonna be a fine honestly and this is just I mean, this is this is uncalled for. This is dangerous. Someone could slip on this, someone could fall on this. This is not cool at all. I don't care how frustrated you are. We talk we get pissed when fans do this, when they throw shit on the yeah. on the court. 
now a player's doing it because he's not getting his way, like he's having a, te a temper tantrum. Like, you, you can't do this, dude. You're having a bad game. Don't capitalize on that with, with jeopardizing, first of all, the health of one of your teammates slipping on that, one of the opposing teammates slipping on that. This is, this is inexcusable. I think there'll be a, a, a hefty fine. Yeah, I'm wondering, Shams, is there, are we expecting some sort of discipline for the heating pad incident? The league obviously will look at, I mean, clearly they're going to have to look at it. But when you look at the play, um, you know, to me, it just shows the frustration throughout that Denver roster, throughout the coaching staff. Mike Malone, you, ha you have Jamal Murray, not only the heating pad, there was also another video that surfaced mm. where he threw a towel, apparently. Um, I, I don't think the referees knew that he was throwing it either in their direction or on the court after the game. Uh, in the referee report, they said they didn't realize. And if they did, they would have given him a technical foul. Mm. So not an injection, but a technical foul. And I'm told even after the game, uh, referees believe that he did it out of frustration, not necessarily throwing it at them. But this is something the league will have to look at today. Yeah, when I when I saw, I thought maybe he was throwing it to the ball boy and, like, it slipped out of the No, it, there's a, you can see This is, like, face. an actual frustrated throwing it and you see guys all the time they, the stuff curry takes his mouthpiece out and throws yeah. it like and, and gets this is a this is a big ass heating pad yeah that could have that like, could have made a problem for like, this is not this is not Don't good this is what good defense does to you yeah. every <laughs> all of these guys are frustrated and trust me nobody's yeah. cheating you nobody's cheating you these guys are locking up they're taking pride in locking y'all it up and this is the first time you're gonna taste your own medicine you're the de defending champions this team wants your spot and they're yeah. there to take it and these guys are playing defense from top to bottom. And when they're done playing defense, they're putting hella pressure on you on the offensive end with some of the best basketball players that you can think of in Minnesota at the head of a guy named Ant-Man. So you're not getting cheated. <laughs> the referees aren't on your side. No. Your coach was supposed to be ejected for what he did, and he got out of, out of that without a technical foul. If that's not some leeway, I don't know what else is. So no, you're not getting cheated. You're just getting your ass kicked. Yeah, I'm. I'm surprised you haven't heard from Draymond yet. Like, I'm sure but, we will today. But Jamal, yeah, he's just frustrated. He's three of eighteen. He's got four turnovers. Yeah. They're getting their absolute ass kicked. Like, you, you, there's like no punch in the mouth. There's no room for this. You, just, you can't do this. By the way, not the he had more. The, if you think we're done with Jamal, we're not. Uh, there's more because the frustration didn't stop there. There's another thing. He throws up a sign. I guess we can try to argue. Is this the money sign? Because if it is. This is what Rudy Gobert got fined 100 grand for. So what is that? Is that just nothing? I can't tell. Nah, he nothing? snuck it in. He snuck yeah, it in. Yeah, <laughs> this is a, yeah, this is like a fadeaway. He, this, he didn't say with his chest like Malone. No, yeah, it's uh. Because a lot, obviously, there's banter with refs, right? You can just say, "Oh, find me," or it's just money, yeah. like on a, basically like insinuating, like it's it's, not, it's nothing to me. I think is where he was getting at. But again, you, now you're just now you're being like rude. Now He's you're just being, mad. Look, yeah. I get it. You're at now, home. Now you're being killed. personal, basically calling yourself rich and the refs poor. Like it's just this is just a bad bad decisions from Jamal Murray. The and they're rich word. as well too. So yeah, they're, they're are com they? They're comfortable. Let's do a whole hour they're on that someday much. in the off season. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, some scoops with Shams and. More in a few minutes. Yep, time for some scoops. Uh, we're gonna start with some uh, an injury. Maxi Kleba with the injury in the. I like. How you said oh, I'm that. sorry. I like to pronounce things correctly. Uh, what is the latest on his availability for tonight? <laughs> Yeah, Ma Maxi Cleaver will be out tonight. He's going to be out potentially for the entire playoffs. I'm told he has a, a dislocated AC joint in his right shoulder. That's the injury he suffered uh, in that closeout game against the Clippers. And um, he's going to be out a significant period of time. They're going to reevaluate him in three weeks. But I'm told it's going to be Ooh. much longer than that, possibly the entire postseason. We know the versatile role he's had, playing center, playing forward. He went 10 of 18 on three-pointers against the Clippers, played almost 20 minutes a game. And he provided a look at the, at the center position that would have thrown off the thunder, but he will not be lost for at least this entire series. I mean, just to look at him in three weeks does not bode well. That's, that seems like a big deal, Chandler. Yeah, Jean said his versatility with the, their fourth quarter defense, he's critical uh, for the, the, the matchup against him, against Chet, where they can go small. He obviously provides outside shooting, just another option of a pick and pop for Luka. So it definitely hurts. I think they got other guys that can step up. P.J. Washington now is going to have a bigger role. He's going to have longer stint of minutes. Dwight Powell might see some action. Gafford, Lively there. So they do have other bigs to throw in the mix, but... You can't really replace a guy with his sort of versatility mm. and his shooting and just kind of his overall, you know, basketball IQ out there. It's, it's a big blow. That's a that's a big one, Lou. Um, 
You guys ready to get to the sound that had everyone talking yesterday? Some Pat Riley fun right now because he had his State of the Union, as he tends to do uh, at the end of each season, and he had some thoughts. So first up, Jimmy Butler's future with the team. As Jimmy ages, and he's going to be 35 years old uh, this year, I know players take better care of themselves these days, but we're talking about mid-30s into late-30s. Are you confident that he can still be a 1A-type player to lead this team to a championship, provided that he's healthy in the playoffs if yes. you put the right pieces? Yes. I think he has that ability, but it's like, you know, it's like anybody else. You might have to make some changes in, in your, your overall routine, your approach to the game, you know, whatever it is. So there, by the way, when somebody says ages, Pat Riley's face kind of got weird. But, okay, there's the first one. We're just going to go into this slowly. What would you think about that? <laughs> I'll say he's the godfather for a reason, right? Really this is, is why you like him. This is why you respect him. But I just feel like this is... These are comments that should happen between him and Jimmy Butler, him and the organization, him and the front office. Like, he doesn't have to go and say the type of stuff that we're going to get into afterwards. Publicly. Yeah, we are. <laughs> I don't necessarily agree with that, but again, he keeps it real and he's calling it like he sees it. And, and there's no fabrication with Pat Riley. He's always been this way. So the truth hurts sometimes. And a lot of the things that he says coming up, I agree with. This is, uh, he's right. Jimmy Butler has the capability of being the number one option. Has he shown it every single night? No. Does he have this magic button to be good in the playoffs? No. Like, that no. doesn't exist. That's just, that's just a thing that we created, that the Heat are really good in the playoffs. They weren't this year. And that doesn't mean they're going to be bad or good next year. But Jimmy Butler, I think, is a critical piece of their, their team moving forward. He's a foundation piece. But, listen, Pat Riley keeps it 100, as the kids as say. As the kids do say, Lou. You know what? Oh, what'd you, what were you going to say, Lou? Sorry. I mean, I like the I like the transparency, but if I'm if I'm Jimmy Butler and I'm taking care of myself, I'm 35. You're still saying I'm a 1A guy. You still you're saying I have the ability, but then at the end of it, you say I have to make some changements and I gotta adjust some things. And if, if I'm Jimmy, I'm saying, well, well, what? And why are we having this conversation in public? Um, you know, I understand you're at a press conference, but you're giving me all of these props, and then you ended with saying that I need to make some adjustments and I need to change my approach to things. And if I'm doing everything that I feel like I should be to to garner the respect of you saying I'm still a 1A guy, what adjustments do I need to make? And why are we having this conversation in front of media? So, because what's going to happen is if Jimmy Butler comes out today and decides to have a rebuttal to this in public, now we're going to criticize Jimmy Butler for having something to say when he's only responding. So I, I, I'm not in love with with uh, the, the stands that Pat Riley took. I'm cool with, the, with it being... Um, out in the open and, and everybody having an opinion and him saying it in a, in a press conference, but I, I just didn't agree with some of the comments. Well, in fairness, uh, Pat also had, was given a, an opportunity to respond to what Jimmy Butler did publicly when he trolled uh, the Celtics and the Knicks, for that matter. So here's Pat on that. You know, for him to say that, you know, I thought, is that Jimmy trolling or is that Jimmy serious? You know, if you're not on the court, playing against Boston or on the court playing against the New York Knicks, you should keep your mouth shut and your criticism of those teams. How about that one, Lou? <laughs> I'm, I'm more impressed that he even knew how to use the word trolling, right. Michelle. That's how you use trolling when you're old. That's yep. it right there. For, so for, for me and Pat and all of us old guys and all of us old people that's just trying to keep up with all the slang, I love the fact that Pat Riley even knew how to use this. But <laughs> I, but I, I agree. Listen, this goes for everybody. If you're not putting on a uniform, you got to chill out and you got to be quiet and allow the guys that's going on the court to do the talking with their play and stay out of it. Yeah, I mean, he sunned him a little bit here, and I feel like bit. it's not really how you're supposed to talk to your franchise 35-year-old vet player, but <laughs> I'm with Lou. I, I, I agree, and this... This reminds me of the Tari Eason thing. It's oh, like, very much. You're not playing, and these teams are are playing, and they had a better season than you, and they're still continuing to play while you're on vacation, and they're competing for a championship. So it's, it's, it's. I guess it's a cool comment to say at the time. Like I understand what Jimmy's trying to do, but at the same time, like pipe down. Like and, you're, you're, you're and not. You know what else, Chandler? It's it's kind of it's kind of separation, right? Because yeah. you know Jimmy is saying, if I were playing, this would be completely different. We'll be up, we'll be smacking these guys. It's like, well, what are you saying about yeah, the rest of the organization, good. especially when you're the Miami Heat and everything is built around Heat culture. It's never been built around individual talent. They've always had a team first approach to things, and so 
if if you're Pat Riley and, and Jimmy is saying these things, this is a fair criticism. Yeah. I think I think it's very <laughs> fair. Um, but I'm wondering, Shams, do we is there any movement possible in the future of Jimmy Butler out? I mean, I have a hard time picturing it, but could he be moved out of Miami? Well, Pat, Pat Riley said a couple interesting things. One is like he did, they really don't have to make a decision on Jimmy Butler un, until you know next year when his contract is up, when he has a player option. He's got forty million dollars next season. $52 million player option for 25-26. And their team clearly out there that would extend Jimmy Butler if they had him and they were able to trade for him. Uh, you know, but he's clearly wanted to be in Miami. Like, he's seen that as a perfect marriage of sorts. And to me, I just look at the five seasons Jimmy Butler has spent in Miami. Two NBA Finals appearances, three Conference Finals appearances. He's either first or second in all the major categories. Points, assists, rebounds, steals, blocks. He's third most in games played behind Bam Adebayo and behind Duncan Robinson. So when you think about availability, he has been up there in terms of games played. I mean, he, more games played than even a guy like Tyler Hero. The Heat are 177 and 114 with Jimmy Butler in the lineup. They're 48 and 49 without him. They're 35 and 22 with him in the playoffs. They're two and five without him. And even just this year, I reported <laughs> on it. He played three quarters with a severe MCL sprain in that knee in that playing tournament game. So. To me, obviously, when you think about talent around Jimmy Butler, he's got Bam Adebayo, he's got Tyler Hero. Now they went out and traded for Terry Rozier. But last year, they went out and tried to get Damian Lillard. They weren't able to get him. And Jimmy Butler stuck with it. He said, we have enough to win. So, uh, you know, it is interesting, the back and forth that we're seeing. Um, but I, I think Jimmy Butler, he's always made it clear he wants to be in Miami long term. It's going to be about will they be able to pay him what he wants. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money to keep him there. Look, the, Pat Riley said a lot about Jimmy Butler, but he didn't use one particular word. He saved that. He saved it for Tyler Hero. Here's Pat on Tyler Hero. He's, he, you know, he's been, he's been fragile a little bit and uh, broke his hand last year in the playoffs. You know, he had some injuries, you know, earlier in his career. And, and there isn't anybody who, who works, you know, harder at his game in the offseason, but uh, he's got to make some some adjustments, definitely, you know? Fragile. I just don't know that breaking your hand makes you fragile. Like, I don't know how- your Bones are fragile. But like, how do you train to not break your hand? Like, like just luck of the draw. Like this, this, uh, this one, I understand. He's, there's a lot of guys that are fragile that happen, you know, what, Giannis is fragile, Damian Lillard's fragile, like the guys that are just hurt. They're, they're, I mean, by definition, sure. I, I guess, it's just, it's part of the game. So it's what you have to deal with. Every team deals with it. So Tyler Hero, to me, he, he's one of their top three players, and that's f for sure. He's one of their valuable pieces going forward. So, like, I don't know if, again, he's Pat Riley's old school, and he calls a spade a spade, but calling one of your best young I mean, players fragile, what did you do? And he's not even there, just catching a stray, like, on vacation is hilarious. But, uh, again, so, there's a lot of things that are out of your control as an, as an athlete, which, sure, does that make you fragile? Does that make me fragile that I tore my meniscus four times? Like, maybe, Probably. but like, I don't, like, yeah. it's, 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 it's out of your control. So I don't know what else he could do to prepare his hand from not breaking. Calcium, like, maybe? Yeah, like, um, <laughs> Lou, you get called <laughs> fragile. Uh, how you fragile feeling today? Fragile suck. It's <laughs> soft, <laughs> fragile, like, it's, the, it's not good. Yeah, I'm not, ex I'm not excited. If I'm a player and you call me fragile, I got an issue with it. I think this is just Pat Riley having a, a lack of a better word, honestly. I, I, I don't think he was trying to call him soft. I don't think he was trying to call him fragile in the sense of how we would take it as athletes. You know, I just think he was trying to say that he's dealt with some issues and his hand being broken and some of the other injuries that he's dealt with. Um, he's had some adversity. I'm, I'm going to give Pat Riley the benefit of the doubt on this one and try and try to say that he wasn't trying to call Hero soft at all. But if I'm Tyler Hero and I'm on vacation with my family somewhere and I hear this, I'm I'm pissed off. It's it is it's a er. I will say fra what? he just means fragile like he's getting hurt fragile. quite often. He's not saying he's soft. He even said he works hard. He works hard as a game in the offseason. Like his bones maybe are a little fragile. Yeah, he's just saying he's just happened to be fragile and hurt that all the time. To the best of us. Um one more. He had something to say about the 65 game. We're still going with Pat no, Riley. Yeah, it's this is the Pat day. Riley segment. It's a whole day. Uh, <laughs> here he is. I don't understand the 65 game rule. I really don't. I know it. I know why they did it, but I don't understand why it's. They said it's okay to miss. At least they're auto suggesting to the players and agent, it's okay to miss. 
you know, 17 games. You know, and to me, that sends a message that it's okay to take a little more time, maybe to to get to be a hundred percent when nobody in this league is a hundred percent. You know, nobody is. See, that's the old school thought. <clears throat> and, no. uh, well, yeah, it doesn't make, really make sense. I understand what he's saying. It makes it, like now they're more worried about their own individual accolades, and they're going to take their rest days based on how many games that they can actually miss to still get compensated for their bonuses of their. Yeah, the All NBA. You can miss 17 games. I get that, but also it, it's that, that's part of it. We're talking about this whole load management thing. That he he's old school. He wants his players to play. He knows everybody's 82. banged up. He wants everyone to play 82 games. Yeah. And you're fragile if you don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? On the players, on the flip side, I think it's stupid because if, I, if Joel Embiid played 64 games this year and Jokic played 65, and I think Joel Embiid should still be qualified to make the, to win the MVP. So I think there is some gray area, but. I understand what he's saying because he, now he's saying that players have this basically built-in games missed. I, That's yeah. okay. That doesn't affect your bonuses and your money. Subconsciously, you're yeah, telling like yourself, you know, okay, I, can I miss. get 17 days off before the season even starts. Whether yeah. it's okay, so I'm sick and I have 13 games left and I can miss two or three of those. I'm gonna sit this one out because yeah. I, I, it reaches this this standard. But I, I don't. I never love this rule. I think it's silly. You know what we've never seen in this low management argument and a 65 game argument? Uh, let's say Jalen Brunson on a run that he's on with four straight 40 point games. He's not going to wake up the next day and say, you know what? I'm playing so well. I'm going to take a day off. No, you're competitive. You're like, Fair. shit, I want another, I want another 40. Like I want to put more numbers on the board. And so I think, I think, I think Mr. Riley and coach Riley and, and all respects to, to him. I think he's looking at this, um, you know, the glass half empty instead of it being full. I think this should be an approach where a guy looks at it and say, I got to play at least 65 games for um, the things that I've been able to accomplish this year gets recognized instead of the opposite way of worrying about the 17 games that that player can miss. Fragile. My favorite thing from the whole soundbite. Uh, we'll take a quick break. Shams, we'll see you bright and early in the morning. We'll come back and uh, wrap some stuff up. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it all, run it back, yeah, yeah, run it all, run it back, run it all, run it back. Well, we've got some uh, fitter brick action for you, and the Met Gala was last night. And my friends, I present to you Benjamino Simone. Benjamino. <laughs> There's a lot going on. Is that a clock, None of it's basketball. A clock briefcase? It's a clock briefcase uh, with the inside of a grandma's suitcase upholstered. On the top. I just like Chandler's facial expression. What you gotta say, Chandler? I just, it's just, it's not for me. It's not, it's not for me, Lou. Can I ask it's a, 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 a? It's a Met Gala. It's not supposed to be like it's the Met Gala. I just I like there's it. a time there's and a self place. Self-awareness yeah, here, right? It's like, deaf. it's just you can't. Self-awareness. What do y'all want Ben Simmons to do? Hide in the house? What do well, y'all want? Here's what, here, Lou. Here's what I'm gonna say. If I never come to work, <laughs> but then you guys see me on red carpets randomly, no, what am Michelle, I doing? Again, he's, listen, basketball is one part of your life. It's one part. I get it. He's injured. He hadn't done everything, but he's he can't hide in the house. You're still allowed to live your life. You're still allowed to enjoy the spoils of your life. I'm, what, he can't go out and have fun? He can. Do you like the outfit that, or not, Lou? Is that what this is? Is this fun? I I, I, I wouldn't wear it. <laughs> I wouldn't wear it. But I'm, a, I'm a, everything okay. looks crazy to me at the Met Gala. The so, Met Gala is uh, insane. It's, it is the it's like the Kentucky Derby. You can wear you the it's bigger like, of an asshole you dress like. Yeah, the it's like douchey it costumes. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break. One fitter brick. This time we're really yeah. Well, that's the only one we could fit in. Uh, we'll be back. Well, nice. We've got 10 seconds left. Uh, just big reminder: we got cousin Sal on tomorrow. Ooh. Chandler, take care of business. Go. See y'all. <laughs> you just have...